Dude, I don't know about you guys, but it feels like ever since it was time for Vegeta to step up to the plate and take out Granola after Ultra Instinct Goku was defeated, it honestly seems like these weeks have just been agonizingly dragging. The past two chapters, however, are at least attempting to slowly explain what exactly is happening with our warriors, but for the most part, Vegeta has come into this new power and gone directly back into battle. For years now, and it's crazy to think of it like that, we've seen Ultra Instinct as kind of this pinnacle of power for mortals and sort of the basis for the angels' powers as of recent. Even as time went on and Goku continued to develop this technique, however, there were still crucial moments where his inexperience with this power cost him dearly. After Ultra Instinct Goku was defeated by Granola, even after his most recent training with Whis that allowed him to demonstrate control over UI that we've never seen before, Vegeta found himself face to face with the so-called strongest in the universe. Now, Vegeta had also been training as well, however, with Lord Beerus taking him under his wing finally and teaching him the ways of destruction, but Granola's power was surprisingly overwhelming. The more Vegeta continued to be pushed, the more he realized that he could let loose, the more he bled, the more berserk he became, it seems. Super Saiyan Blue evolved Vegeta even with the power of destruction at his disposal to some extent proved to be less than a match for Granola who had spent a considerable amount of energy already in his battle with Goku, but then something changed. With no one to save, no planet to protect, Vegeta's savage battle sense took over and something inside of him absolutely snapped as Granola delivered a near fatal blow to his abdomen. Vegeta had now succumbed to his savage side once more, but something was far, far different this time around, as his aura became not only extremely threatening, but scorching hot as well. Vegeta would be consumed by this aura as his transformation developed, and the final product was stunning. In today's video, I want to do my best to explain what we already know about Vegeta's Ultra Instinct-like form, Ultra Ego, and some of the comparisons being drawn between the two. I think we can expect a bit more of a detailed explanation in the next chapter of Dragon Ball Super, but for now, we can analyze what we've seen previously and the information that's being compiled so far from across the internet. If you guys want to check out the Dragon Ball Super manga for yourselves in case you aren't caught up somehow already, as always, I recommend sites like Viz Media and the Shonen Jump app to always support the official releases, so be sure to go check them out. If you haven't already, be sure to have those notifications turned on to never miss an upload as soon as they go live. And if you are enjoying all of the anime content recently, consider leaving a like on this video as well. It really helps out a ton, guys. Be sure to follow on both Twitch and Twitter to stay up with me and all Dragon Ball and anime related content. But without further ado... So as I said prior guys, the past two chapters of Dragon Ball Super have been really interesting to say the least. Albeit the consensus on the most recent chapter was pretty clear with the way things happened with Vegeta, the more we learn about this form, the more interesting the future seems for Dragon Ball, especially with the movie next year. As Vegeta took on this new form, it was quite apparent from the start, at least in some way, the training he'd done with Beerus had paid off. Having already demonstrated control over the power of destruction, this form took Vegeta to a whole new level, relative to how Goku changed after his first Ultra Instinct transformation. Right away, it seems like the first indication of a user being able to harness this power is obviously having relative knowledge and control over the power of destruction, but the main point is the mindset the user is in, which as we can see from Vegeta, played a huge part in accelerating this form. As we pretty much saw with our own eyes, when Vegeta took on this form, he instantly became more powerful by leagues even, and I would assume that he has near full control over the power of destruction at this point, although we may not see it in its entirety until the true final battle of this arc. One of the most interesting portions of this transformation, however, and this is probably my favorite part, is the aura. Now in Dragon Ball, I would think something like this would be a lot more common than it is, but the aura Vegeta possessed while transforming into his Ultra Ego form was pretty unique. 
thin but very powerful and dangerous flames manifest themselves in the form of this unique aura around him that can involuntarily of Vegeta destroy enemy attacks on contact as we saw from Granola attempting to shoot Vegeta as he transformed. One of the more controversial aspects of this transformation, funnily enough however, is the name itself. I'm going to be honest here, I myself am not really a fan of the phrase Ultra Ego, it sounds kind of corny to me, but I suppose relative to Vegeta it is slightly fitting. As we dive a little deeper into the translations, and some still call them a bit sketchy, but with what we have at the moment, we can begin to draw the conclusion that Ultra Ego is almost a direct contrast to Ultra Instinct, or so it seems right now. Ultra Instinct looks to draw upon a severe level of self-indulgence in battle as Vegeta displayed vigorously in his fight with Granola more and more as the battle went on. Instead of the body instinctively dodging and counter-attacking and becoming, you know, more precise and efficient as the battle goes on, it would seem that Vegeta's variation overall just explodes his strength as the battle goes on with damage being taken and his bloodlust increasing. This was further displayed as Vegeta pretty much just admitted to his Primal Saiyan instincts resurfacing in this fight, being able to almost enjoy the pain that he and his opponent inflict on each other. The immediate drawback that we did see from this form though, were the dangers of Vegeta just completely succumbing to his bloodlust and forcing his body to grow stronger through these means. Once Vegeta became too engulfed in battle, he began neglecting how much damage he'd taken and eventually it did catch up with him. Now yes, I know Vegeta was defeated by Granola at the end of the last chapter, even with his new Ultra Ego form as Granola just pulled out some crazy double Sharingan stuff, but there is one detail that I really want to hammer down on here that I think a lot of people are looking past. Yes, it took far, far, far too long for Vegeta to get something like this, I completely agree, and yes, it does seem like Vegeta just does kind of get written off for the sake of Goku coming back to save the day a lot of the times, but Ultra Ego is just the beginning, guys. With all of the comparisons and relativity to Ultra Instinct, I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever, and I feel like you guys should feel this way as well, that this is only the most infantile form of Ultra Ego Vegeta will be capable of. When we first saw Ultra Instinct sign in the Tournament of Power, we had no idea the things Goku would be capable of, not only in his later fights with Moro and Granola, but even just the stuff he was able to do by the end of the Tournament of Power. Ultra Ego definitely is not done guys, and neither is Vegeta, and I hope and think that by the end of the Granola arc, we may even be looking at a mastered Ultra Ego Vegeta.